I'm going to give you a sneak peek now inside the folder that you get, the three different folders you'll get when you purchase a license to the Ideal Customer Experience Journey. And you'll be downloading three different zip files, one for participant materials, one for facilitator materials, and one for promotional materials. And then you'll just need to extract the files from there. So you would get the double click on the zip file and click on extract all files. At least that's the way it works in Windows. I'm sure Mac, I think Mac automatically does it for you. Then you'll end up with the open folders where you'll be able to go in and use and edit all the content. The participant material folders is your content for your students. The facilitator materials are the contents for you to be able to teach the, the course and the promotional materials folder contains everything you need to build your sales funnel and profit from the course. And I'm going to go through each one of them and give you just a little peek at some of the materials. So let's start with the participant ones and you'll see they're ordered so that you can kind of see which ones go with which, at least the initial ones. There's the course book, that's the content that you would hand out or package up for self-study and let me just show you what that looks like first. There is a PDF extract of this at the bottom of the sales page here. And you, so you'll be able to see the first chapter there. I'll go up to the beginning. There's a place for you to put in your own branded e-cover, which you should always do, and your logo. You go into the header and the footer to change anything there. Just double click. Same with the footer where you'd put in your company name and your URL. And then you'll just be able to go through and edit anything. You'll see here, I'll scroll down a little bit, there's the learning objectives at the beginning. There are some links in there. Uh, we've added some graphics where we highlight some of the content, some of the key concepts. And then at the end of each chapter, I'll go all the way down here, you'll see there's a learning activity. That's the end of each chapter. And there's then a workbook where people can complete those activities. So I'll open that one up. You can take a quick peek. Again, you brand it. And then for each learning activity, there's some sort of form where people answer the questions that were asked. And of course, they don't have to do it in this. They could just do it in their own notebook if they wanted. Next, there's the summary checklist. And in the summary checklist, they get a list of all the key concepts from the course and all the different steps that they had to do. And you can use that as a handout, either for a course or for a webinar. If we go up again, there's a slides handout. That's just all the slides in a document. So if you're running a course or a webinar, it gives people a place to take notes as they listen to you. There's an infographic that you can also use as a handout, and we've given you the text for that. So you could also use it as a blog post, the image itself, and the image in PowerPoint so that you can edit it very easily. And actually, I show you how to edit a PowerPoint as part of repurposing an infographic in a blog post um, over on the blog. So I'll give you the link to that. Next, there are the graphics that were in the course book, so you don't have to give these out, but you have the PowerPoint, so you can edit them quite easily. And finally, there's a bonus tools list, and what this is, is a few different tools that can be used for creating customer experience maps. Some of these are more complicated, more expensive than others. Some people just prefer to use a spreadsheet, or even a piece of paper or some post-its. Now let's go back up to the next folder, which is the facilitator materials. And as I said, these are for teaching the course. So the first thing, the main part, is the slideshow. Let me open that up for you so you can see. And there are, let's see, 94 slides in here, along with some notes in the bottom of each one. You'll brand it like before, and you can change the design to be something of your own that's branded or one of the built-in ones that they have in PowerPoint or whichever program you use. And you'll go through and edit the notes so that you can read them or you'll get them in the facilitator guide as well, which I'll show you in a second. 
And as you see, there's one for each part that goes along with the course book, including, as I scroll down, there's some artwork, including a slide to remind you to ask questions, a slide for the activity so that you can, if you're running this online or in a classroom, you remember to tell people about it, and then a debrief slide for asking questions and getting feedback from the activity. And this could be, if you're separating it into webinars, it could be at a second webinar where you ask people to share what they did in between. So those are the slides, and these are perfect, ready to record as video as well. You could just talk through the speaker notes, for instance, from the facilitator guide, and then insert it at the very first slide, that first one, and then record the slideshow and save it as a video. I actually have a tutorial on that also, and all my tutorials are in the blog section under Content in Action. The next part is the facilitator guide I mentioned. And this is a pretty large document because what we've done is added some instructions at the beginning that give you more instructions about the course, the audience, as well as some ideas of other courses you could add to this to create a complete curriculum on, say, a customer-focused business or how to create a customer-focused business. So that's really helpful and all the notes are in here as well so if you want to have a separate document that has all your speaker notes in it and all the slides you can just edit it this way it's in Word. There's an evaluation form and that is something you can hand out to people or send to people after you've had them complete the course whether it's self-study or video webinar whatever format and this gives you some feedback so that you can actually make improvements to your course for the next time. Research sources are just a place, a list of different sources that we used or that we suggest you look at to learn a little bit more about the topic of the customer experience. That's always helpful before you teach anything. Teach yourself a little bit more. Use ours as the basis and then go and learn more about it. Follow-up emails. Use these to follow up with people after you've taught the course or they've had some time to complete it and just edit these for your own language and then send them out and add more to them. That builds a good relationship and you can sell on additional products that way. The mind map overview is just another way for you to see all the different contents that you're getting here. And we give you, I'm going to skip down, we also give you a list of all the contents in a Word document. Because there's so much, it just helps to have this overview of everything that you've gotten, all the content. There's a document with some ideas for different ways to deliver training programs and how you can figure out which is best for your market. There's the Read First document, which gives you some basic rules. And there's the some instructions for using your content, getting familiar with it, ideas for customizing it and using it for your particular market. And that's it in the facilitator materials. We'll go back up and the last folder to look at is the promotional materials. As you can see there's a lot in here. We've tried to order it in the way that you would use it starting with an opt-in report which is something you can use as a giveaway to get some emails of people that would be prospects for buying the course. And this one is called 21 Essential Touch Points for Creating an Ideal Customer Experience. It's set up as a report with all the different points, but we've also given it to you in two other formats as a slideshow so that you could teach it actually as a short webinar or recorded video. And the notes are in there from the report so that you have a script and then there's a checklist version of it which is great handout either as an addition to the report or as a handout to go with that webinar a way to summarize and reinforce what they learned just like you did with the checklist for the main course Then there's an opt-in page and I suggest while we give you a template for actually editing it in HTML I suggest you use just the copy from this, from this opt-in page, edit it and put it into your own template or tool for opt-in forms or opt-in pages. And the same with the sales page, which is a little bit further down here. You get the text and you can just put that into your own tool. Like I use Optimize Press for sales pages and I use lead pages for opt-ins. 
there's the emails for following up after people have actually received the gifts so that you can build a little bit of relationship, give them some more information, and then promote your course. And then there are a few different promotional content pieces you can use to publish on the web and drive some more traffic. The infographic, which I mentioned, I did a tutorial on how to repurpose that into a blog post and a, another way to gather emails. And as I said, I'll give you the link to that. There's the blog post. There are five in there that you can edit and use in different ways. You don't have to use them as blog posts. You could put them together as reports, use them for emails, actually use them as part of the course itself as additional information or as follow-up emails any way you want. Don't think just in terms of using it based on the name that we call it. Same with the tweets. We put them into a spreadsheet which has the actual number of characters counted already. And here you can see there's about 30 of them and they're all different tips. So you don't have to use them as tweets. Use them for other social media posts or to have topics for emails or oh any number of ways you could use them to create your own infographics or put on images to share on social media just keep an open mind on that and going back up there's the sales page I mentioned and then there are also some e-cover templates and these are ones that you can just add your own image to and then add your own title use a program like Box Shot King to create a 3D version of it, or just go to Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com, and you can pay someone $5 to create one for you. And that is everything. All the different folders, there are a lot of different ways you can use the materials, use them as is for sales funnel. If you don't know where to start, rebrand it, rename it, do some light editing, or you can go all out and use the content just as your jumping off point to spark all sorts of ideas. I've even included some ideas for putting together a curriculum as I pointed out in the facilitator guide. So think about creating a whole series of courses on creating a customer focused business. So enjoy and let me know if you have any questions.